Hi, everybody. This is Lee Baudet with another Test Drive podcast, our 22nd podcast. And with me is Scott Nickerson from Sport Car USA. Scott, welcome back. Thanks for having me. I've been a radio broadcaster for over 40 years, the front man slash host of Sport Car USA, and a big, big car enthusiast my entire life. I mean, is there anything better than loving cars? It's contagious, for sure. No question I mean, about it. you got it, it from someone. So. <laughs> yeah, I would, that would be my dad. Yeah. He couldn't afford anything because he was raising five kids. Well, you can still love them yeah, from he afar. He love them. <laughs> once the kids got out of the house, it's time to shine, baby. Yep. And uh, he was showing up with a new car about every three weeks. Oh, that that <laughs> definitely uh, must be a hereditary thing. <laughs> now you know where I get that from, right? But anyhow, it has been quite a summer. The summer is not over yet here in 2023. We've... Had a couple of showcases that were canceled at Sport Car USA. We're very disappointed about that. We yep. didn't set any rain dates at the time, but our next one, which will be our second of the year, usually we have what five? Sort of been our fourth. By okay, now. Yeah. so in August it's going to be on the 18th. We've actually put a couple of rain dates in just in case because we don't want the summer to go bye bye without having any sport car usa showcases no so we've got the 18th scott that's a friday five to eight yep that's going to be at our sister dealerships handy chevy and toyota they are in st albans as is sport car usa and it's just off of exit 20 on the highgate road yep five to eight on a friday evening free food i've heard philly cheesesteaks we're really stepping it up there creamies drinks djs and we're gonna have Dozens upon dozens upon dozens of cars on display. It rains. We've got two backup dates, the 19th and the 25th. Yeah, hopefully it'd be nice to not use them because it's always easier to go as scheduled. Right. But yeah, we're not we're not going away easy this time. And we've got more things coming up as well. Of course, we've got the Lake George Adirondack Show. Yep. That's a huge event. If you've never been, you really got to go. If you go there, we're going to have our Sport Car USA calendars. Front page has the... Lake George Adirondack Car Show pictures, yep. and we'd be happy to hand those out. Just ask for one. We'll give them to you. We're going to be there pretty much all weekend long. Yeah, we'll definitely be getting uh, some more pictures for our next calendar, so keep an eye out for that once the end of the year comes around. We'll be giving out more 2024 calendars. Yes, exactly. We're working on that right now as we speak. Yep. Big Street Rod Show coming up in Essex Junction in September. Is it late August or September? So it's the week after Lake George. Okay. Uh, So that's a busy uh, couple weekends there, and we're actually going to be leading a cruise. So it's at the uh, Champlain Valley Expo in Essex Junction, or I guess Essex. Yeah, can anybody join that cruise? Yeah, so if you are part of the show, if you have a car entered into that the Street Rod Nationals show in Essex. Uh, we'll be leaving from the fairgrounds, uh, I believe, at 2.30. And then you, we're going to drive up to uh, Sport Car USA up here in St. Albans. It's about a 30, 35-minute drive. And we'll have some food and uh, beverages and things like that. And we'll kind of just park and hang out. And then I guess there's a spaghetti dinner that <laughs> night. So people will go down for some spaghetti. You got to love spaghetti. I mean, we have yeah. Bove's here in Vermont. And yep. Bove's very famous for their spaghetti sauce. Not sure that's what they're going to be serving, but... We've got to go back a plan if they aren't. Yep. That should be a lot of fun. And what's after that? We've got uh, more oh, events, or is that going to wrap I it up? I guess Essex is our last big one that big we're going one, yeah. to um, right. outside of SEMA, uh, which I right. believe we're going to be at. I hope uh, we sent two people last year, uh, our GM and one of our uh, purchasers. They both went and experienced SEMA last year. So hopefully you and I. Well, they told me I was going this past year, and guess who didn't go? Yeah, well, I guess we'll have to. Maybe you get a <laughs> get it for this year. That'd be nice. Yeah, they were gonna send one of my cutouts. Yeah, that'll that we have good. in the we'll showroom. Just walk yeah. around with it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Last weekend, we both were attending the Swanton Car Show. This is Swanton, Vermont. It's just up the road from St. Albans, not yep. far from the border. About what ten yep. minutes away from the oh, Canadian yeah. border. We're not far at all. Yeah, but this is a really, really great show. It's one of my favorites. It's a local show, of course. They have all the vehicles in a park. I'm not sure what the name of that park is. It's just like the town green or something. The town green, yeah, Yeah. village green, that kind of thing. They literally fill that park. Not so much that you can't move, but wherever a car can fit, they find a spot. It's insane how many cars they fit there. Yeah. You, if you were to drive by, you, you would not think, oh, I bet there can be 200 plus cars in that. 
exactly. little like grass patch. Yeah, and then people surround the park because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them are looking for parking spaces for their vehicle. But many of them are the classic or muscle cars and antiques. They've right got some on big the, trucks. On the road. Yeah, absolutely. And but, food vendors, right? There's, oh, there's yeah. food vendors down on oh, one yeah. end. So people were uh, out there in the parking lot with smoked meat, had those uh, smokers going and. Of course, the usual hamburgers, hot dogs, fries, that kind of thing. Yeah. Great, great time. I think they had probably 230 to 250 wow. vehicles there. And what a lot of the car people that have their cars in the show, they have a ton of awards. I mean, I think they have more awards than, than any other car show I've been to. And I've been to many, trust me. And it's not all about the awards, but it is kind of nice that multiple people can get awards that normally wouldn't get any awards. Yeah. It's nice to kind of share the wealth in that way, too, because when we go to these shows, we've had a couple, which hopefully next year we will, we'll have a Sport Car USA award, and there's just so many beautiful, like, perfect, pristine cars. There's no way to pick just one sometimes. So it's right. nice that they give those people the recognition for the work that they put in or... Anything like that. And like most shows, this is, I mean, we're going to, we forget about the Waterbury Stowe Show. Used yeah. Used to be the Stowe Car Show. We're going to be week. there as well next week. That's a big, big show. That's huge. Hundreds and hundreds of cars. People from Canada, all over the New England area, they, they come up to this show. Well, they have like a vendor area too where it's like. They do. I don't want to call it a junkyard, but people they have. Flea market. They call yeah, it a flea, flea market. market. Yeah. Uh, people have the most obscure car parts yeah. that they have in their garage. And there's someone there that will need it. If you're looking for a particular car part and you just can't find it, got to check out the Stowe slash Waterbury flea market. Or, yeah, the flea market and the car show itself. Mm -hmm. I say Waterbury slash Stowe. It was held in Stowe for probably 50 plus years. Yeah. And, and what, the field got flooded yeah, or something? Yeah, it's called Nichols Field. It always got flooded. Yeah. And uh, they sold the property. So mm -hmm. they had to find an, a new venue and they did in waterbury and it's very very nice it really is yeah you can see it uh from the interstate if you're looking if you know where to look it's quick you drive by it but yeah yeah, yeah. so i'm sure we'll be reporting on that after yeah. the fact getting back to the swanton car show again lots and lots of awards really nice the weather was fantastic here in vermont in particular you've heard about all the flooding maybe you haven't but it is since hurricane irene it's worse than that or was worse than that yeah. And everybody's still in recovery mode. Northern Vermont, which is where we're located with Sport Car USA, uh, not so much. Yeah, I know that uh, I'm curious to see how the field looks in Waterbury next week because I, uh, I play baseball in the summer and the field we normally play at is in Waterbury and it was all clay. Yeah, yeah, it was, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it was ruined. The Just The fences were gone. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah you, you take a drive from here southwise and it's devastating to see people's belongings on the side of the road all mm -hmm. piled up yeah you go an hour away and it's a completely different world yeah. we got really lucky up here yeah so the swanton car show we saw so many really really cool cars and in just a moment or two we're going to be playing some of the interviews that scott and i had a had the pleasure of uh, introducing ourselves meeting these people and asking them questions about their prized possessions yeah, I, I remember just like watching back a lot of the footage, just seeing all the different cars that were there. And it's interesting to see people's unique takes on a lot of these classic cars. I remember, uh, I believe we saw him at the uh, one of the previous shows we were at. I don't think we got to interview him, but hopefully we can get him at one of our shows. But it's basically like an old school Mustang, but the interior uh, is like a 2019 mm -hmm. Mustang, and it's got a 5.0 coyote motor in it and all this stuff so you know something you'd never think of it's funny that you bring up a mustang i'll tell a story with no names here of course mm -hmm. there's a certain person who has a yellow mustang and she goes to all the shows <laughs> but we've been told by experts of these shows do not talk to her because be she, long -winded, I guess. she is very long-winded and she will talk and talk and talk loves her car it seems like a nice lady but do not ask her one question or you're going to be there for about a half a day. day yeah so we all know that right we go to shows it's like oh that guy over there is this this person over here is that and mm -hmm. stay away or yeah and then there's some people who you ask them about their car and it's 30 seconds and they're done you're like well yeah. no this is special like you should Tell us more about it. But, you know. yeah. One of the interviews you're going to see is about a gentleman 
who has a Land Cruiser, a Toyota mm-hmm. Land Cruiser. He and, was long-winded. Oh, he was long-winded. He went on for quite a bit, but I got to tell you, he absolutely loves this Land Cruiser, and he has modified it big time. I, yeah, I know. When when he was talking about it, there isn't much of the actual original Land Cruiser left. I think he said like the actual the, yeah. the axles and a few other things and the grill, but a lot of it, it's just such a cool. Yeah, and I, and yeah. the new Land Cruiser just got announced. Yes, it did, which is interesting timing. Yeah. Um, so it's a very, very different vehicle, but it's certainly cool to see what he did with it. One thing that I, in particular, felt pretty good about, I don't know why, but I love vanity license plates. I've had many, many mm-hmm. muscle cars and classic cars. I always like to put a vanity plate on them, as long as it's tasteful. Right. Right? I mean, there's one person who had a Corvette, not at this show, but years ago I saw, and it's a nice red Corvette. And the license plate said... You wish. That was it. You wish. And I'm thinking, buddy, you are asking for trouble Mm -hmm. because there are a lot of people who resent people that have nice things. Yeah. And somebody might do something to that car. I hope not, but you wish. Oh, gee. Yeah. Not not good. No, it's not as tasteful as some others. Yeah. But the reason I bring that up, there was a Corvette there that Sport Car USA sold to this gentleman like a month ago. I think it's a 97 Corvette, red. Mm-hmm. And his license plate was 9T9. Mm. So we know it's a 99, That's right? A plate. Well, guess who used to have that plate maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago? Was it you? It was me. Really? Yeah, I had a 99 Mustang GT convertible. Hmm. Had a lot of flaws to it, but I bought it off the showroom floor. It was a demo that the owner drove. I think I counted 23 different flaws because that's, you know, I'm very anal and I go around the car. Why did I buy it? I don't know. It was black. It was cool. But yeah, I had a license plate 99. Exact same. Yeah. And I'm thinking, darn. I I, I was a little disappointed to see my plate out there on another car. That's interesting. We got to try and get an interview with him. Yeah, we will. Tell him about that. We will. We will. So that should be a lot of fun. So, like we said, we've got some interviews coming up, Scott. Uh, any preview of the interviews? No, I think we, we talked to a lot of interesting people, and uh, there's people from out of state, which is kind of cool yeah. to see just how much these shows spread. And uh, we got a lot of people from Quebec that come to these shows just because we are so close to the border. So it's right. cool to see uh, people from all different areas. We're at the Swanton Car Show. With me is Mark. And Mark, tell us your whole name. Where are you from? Uh, Mark Russell right here in Swanton, Vermont. The Swanton Car Show, uh, you're one of the coordinators of it, right? And how many years have we been doing this? Correct. Uh, This is our 13th year. We'll say 12 plus one because of COVID. So, Uh, but it's been a great turnout again this year. I think we're approaching 200 cars. Beautiful sunny day. Uh, No humidity. What more can you ask for? Had a little rain yesterday, so you postponed it until today, and it looks like you made the right choice. Yeah, we got burnt one year. A couple years ago, we changed it to a Sunday, and it's actually the Saturday was the better day. So, but hey, we'll take what we can get. This is always one of my favorite car shows. As you know, I've been here with my Mustang and yep. my Corvette before. But what are what are some of the awards that you're going to be giving out today? So we give favorite 50, not to you know mix that up with the, the top 50 because we don't want to do that. It's favorite 50 of the judges who may bring them back to some nostalgia or whatever they liked. We've included motorcycles this year, so we're giving three awards for motorcycles. Best of Show, Chamber Choice Award, and then we have like eight other specials. Female Choice, maybe Best Truck, most likely to get pulled over, uh, things like that. And it's always been a, a great draw here, and I think it's because of the shade, and I like to think we run a pretty good show. You run a great show, and we're in the middle of town. What's the name of this park? Uh, the Village Green is what we call it. Okay, yep. So you get cars all over the Village yep. Green and all different uh, angles. It's it's really something. Yep. Thanks. We appreciate it. And it's a great way for the community to bring people from the outside to come in to see our little town. Yep. All right, Mark, thank you so much. Thank you. So tell us your name and where you're from. Uh, Charlie Smith from Waterville, Vermont. Charlie, I've seen this car at a number of car shows. Tell us all about it. Um, 71 Dodge Challenger RT. I've owned it since 1976. It's the first car I ever bought. Um, it wasn't in this condition when I got it. Um, we did the body work on it in the 80s when I got out of high school. So the paint is 40 years old. Um, I did go through the engine. Uh, Quentin Brothers did the engine five or six years ago. And it's got the original um, interior in it. Everything's been put back to as factory original as I can. and. I drive it about 500 miles a summer. 
How did you find this car? Uh, it was uh, my best friend in school. It belonged to his cousin. Um, it was five years old and it was all rusted out. And I've only been able to trace it back to uh, Rotunda's auto body in Jericho uh, had it. And I think he bought it from the used car lot at Lake Buick. And that's as far as I've been able to go with it. That's funny that you mentioned Joe Rotunda, Rotunda's auto body, because I have a 66 Mustang. And guess who did the paint on it? Mm -hmm. Yes, I've, I've seen your red Mustang. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Joe actually owned this car at one time. And What's your favorite memory for in the last 40 years with this car? Um, I don't know is if you could call the uh, dumb luck of hanging on to it being a memory, because I moved away for 10 years and the thing just sat at my parents' house and um, the, as far as the memories, I, I had it in high school, um, just a lot of good memories and they're still, I drove it to uh, Laval, Quebec to Nick's Garage uh, the 1st of June and that's quite a memory driving this 50 year old car on four lanes of traffic through uh, Montreal. That's going to be my memory for a while. That was a lot of fun. Give us your full name and where are you from? Thomas Hearn, Katyville, New York. Thomas Hearn, you have a really special Ford Mustang here. It looks like a 1967 body style. Tell us all about this 67 Mustang. We bought it in 1993 for like $350. We've rebuilt it twice, the same color. Uh, upgraded it with the rack and pinion and the disc brakes and made it more drivable. People always ask about the color mm -hmm. and the color does not have a name. It came out of a DuPont paint chip book for tractor trailers and it's just, I call it roadside green. You know, it's the closest thing I can compare it to. Yeah, it's very, very nice. And when did you acquire this and how much work have you done to it? Uh, I required in, in 1993. Yeah. There was a six-cylinder four-lug Mustang. Uh, we pulled a six-cylinder out, put a 302 in it, did the uh, stainless steel brakes conversion on it, the Flame and River rack and pinion steering. That shock tower has been replaced. Uh, quarter panel has been replaced. Front and rear balance panels. Uh, the radiator, the bucket seats on the inside, all new glass, headliners. And, and in fact, we did it twice. The first time we restored it, we kept the original steering and the drum brakes, and you couldn't stand it. Yeah. So then we converted it over to the disc brakes and the rack and pinion. So would you say that's the best $350 you've ever spent? Yes, I think so. <laughs> you know, but back in the day, 350 bucks in 1993 was a lot of money, you know. My name is Sandy Walker, and I'm from Peru, New York. Mm -hmm. Sandy, this yellow is just screaming at me. Tell me about this car. Well, actually, this is the second car we've owned, the second 73 that we've owned. Um, we had the first one when we were just dating back in 1976, and we sold that when we were going to get married. So when he saw this one uh, just a few years ago, he had to buy that. Did you go out with him because he had a cool car? No, actually, he bought this car because he said he, if he bought one, he'd, he could never get married. And then just a few weeks after he bought it, he asked me to marry him. Nice, very nice. The best story of the day right there. Sandy, tell us about this car, like where it came from, who owned it. Oh my gosh, he bought it from somebody in New Hampshire. Uh, I, I don't know all of the details, uh, but the gentleman had had it for quite a few years and he was looking to buy another vehicle, so he sold it. My husband had been looking and looking, um, and when he came across this particular car, he just had to get it. And how could I say no? Exactly. How could you say no? What's the specific color name on this? Do you know? Oh my gosh. I, I can't recall if it's actually taxi cab yellow, <laughs> uh, which I mean, it certainly looks like it is, doesn't it? Yes. But it could be taxi cab yellow. Okay. So you're going to hang on to it for a while? Uh, yeah. 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 It's a driver and yeah. Donald Sweet, Franklin, Vermont. Donald, you've got one heck of a nice car here. Tell us all about it. Well, it's a 1972 Plymouth Roadrunner restored from ground up. Still, you probably don't notice it, but still got like twenty thousand dollars it needs done. But all outside, inside's all done. There's always something you can do to them, right? Always, always, every day. 
Where did you get this car? How'd you acquire it? We got it from Ohio and restored it from there. Did you go online to try to find oh, no, it? Was it was sight, sight unseen. Specifically looking for this yeah. year and model? Well, a roadrunner. We started out as a roadrunner. Okay. So what else do you need to do to it? You said 20,000 more? We got, like, I want to change some parts, like a new power booster. You know, I want to do underneath of it. I need to get a new rear end put in it. You know, and it adds up fast. <laughs> I see a Quinton Brothers sticker on there. What's that all about? I do some of my work. I had fuel injection put in it, and they did that. And I got a I got a leaky real main seal last year, and they fixed that. That's pretty good. Quinton Brothers, they're based out of Williston, and they supercharge cars and yep. do a whole lot more, don't they? I know, and everything, yeah. Body work, wire, everything. You name it, they do it. What's the most fun you've had in this car? Coming to car shows. Yeah. We like car shows. You go to most of them. This actually this is our first year because I've been we've been working on this to get it up here. It's our first actual year being out on the road. Mind telling us what you paid for this? I uh, we paid 29.5 when we first got it. Gonna hang on to it? Oh yeah, because now we we probably put in under 50 grand. So. All right. Tell us your full name. Where are you from? Abe Lewis, Middlesex, Vermont. Abe, you have a Toyota Land Cruiser, something I've never seen. What have you done to this? Well, uh, I kept the cowling and the hood. To get that grill, that grill and transfer case and both axles and everything else is brand new uh, a brand new radiator electric fan four row brand new comes diesel a double clutch like you'd find in a, a, a three-quarter ton dodge truck a remanufactured nv 4500 five speed the reason you want the five speed you need to go a little faster because of the tire size and the gear ratio then uh i designed a roll cage for it and I had a friend who does that and he he bent it and uh, then we just painted it put glass in the roof uh, it's uh, the bumper everything has all been modified to fit the frame is a custom-built FJ 45 truck frame because now I have a 120 inch wheelbase on it the only disadvantage in tight quarters, you can only get so much turn on those axles. So you want to be ready to turn before you get there. <laughs> What's the year of it, and the where where did you get it? 66. Uh, I used it for a snowplow truck, and then I happened to pick up a used Cummins for $500, and I got a brainstorm. I'm going to stretch that because the frame's gone. I'm going to put a new frame under it, and then I'm going to make buy two more doors and put them on the back. How long have you had it? Oh, I had the car uh, 12 years, the, the Cruiser 12 years. I've had four of them. Uh, a one, a 72, I rebuilt everything on that, but nothing major, just holes and rust made it and painted it. it you know, I had new tires, new brakes on it when I bought it, you know, for yeah. 3500 bucks. and then I sold it. This one will probably go for about 150 It's going to go on and bring a trailer here probably next week. We're going to see this at Bear Jackson or what? No, I, uh, too much money for those people. You know, they got to pay too much. you got to pay another 10% finder's fee, and it's too far to travel. And if you if you want to keep the money, you got to let it go for the price that they're bidding at. Uh, or if not, you got to pay a fee to put the truck in there. We're Sport Car USA, but our sister store is Handy Toyota. I know the folks at Handy Toyota would like to see this on their showroom floor. Yeah, I actually have at it the the uh, 802 up there. So everybody in the shop, everybody in the office, everybody that come out and look at it. They went nuts. I know Dave Handy. I bought a diesel truck from him once. Scott Nickerson from Sport Car USA, thanks for being with us. I want to thank everybody for listening to our Test Drive podcast number 22. I'm Lee Bodet, your host. And make sure you check out our Test Drive series on YouTube. We'll see you next time on our Test Drive podcast. And remember, let's never forget the men and women serving this great country of ours. Goodbye, everybody.